Good morning, my friends. It's a moment to have a little sip of coffee. I, as a matter of fact, have this nice cup with me, keep calm and pray, which is always a good um, instruction to follow. I do have actually black tea in here, but let's imagine it's a coffee. I'm sure you have coffee in your cup. Uh, these have been windy days, last days here in Estonian politics. Maybe you live somewhere else and you enjoy a nice summer or you are in Australia, then you have winter at this time. But, you know, life goes on. I haven't seen so windy days in the summer in July for a long time. Anyway, I want to talk about a little bit about peace and joy. In life storms, you need peace and joy. When we first came to the church, I'm sure you heard uh, statements like that. Hey, listen, if you give your life to Jesus, he'll take away the uh, burden of sin uh, from your heart and fill your spirit with peace and joy. And people who have witnessed, oh, I received the Lord. I gave my life over to him. Since then, I've had this peace and joy. So peace and joy are so vital in our lives. We need that. And it's a rare commodity in nowadays when you look around, people are very serious. Everybody has, um, <laughs> has sunk deeply into the phone and very attentive what's going on there. Very few people are joyous and very few people have peace. Everybody's worrying about something. Fears, fears about the future, fears about financial obligations that we bear, fears about our family issues, our children, how they turn out, how things are going with their families, grandchildren, always worries, fears. But we need peace and we need um, joy. Now, Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in drinking and eating, but it is in the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And righteous living, righteousness, which is right standing before the Lord, gives us automatically peace and joy. It first gives peace when things are in their right order that does provide peace. I remember years ago when uh, my mom was first diagnosed with this incurable cancer. As a matter of fact, the first day we were there in the doctor's office, I remember that really well, the doctor gave um, that um, a very grim diagnosis. I remember the look before he even started to talk. He looked at me, he looked at my mom, and I could tell something bad is going to come out of that. And it did. And as a ma matter of fact, my mom had sarcoma cancer on her, uh, on her foot and uh, in the groins as well. Eventually it came out and also near the um, knee area. But anyway, he suggested that this leg should be amputated. Now he gives this uh, bad news. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cancer, it's an aggressive cancer, it's a very, very bad form of cancer. And he says right there, I suggest you amputate that leg as soon as you can. Man, that shook our world. And uh, I was so worried about my mom. We were so close. We were the only two members of our family and, uh, and I couldn't get these thoughts out of my mind. You know, for days I didn't feel any peace. All I had was fears, worries. I was thinking about all of that. I was imagining how my mom would die, the sufferings and all of that. I couldn't bear it. But then 
I remember I called uh, or, or messaged to a friend of mine in Nigeria, a pastor by the name Sam, Sam Tukura. I said, listen, would you pray for me and my mom? And he said, yes. And he called and we were there and uh, with the speaker uh, on, uh, on my phone, uh, he prayed and he didn't rebuke the cancer or, or declare the healing, which all would have been well and fine to do, but he just said, he just prayed for grace and mercy that God would give my mom grace. And that's exactly what God did. God extended my mom's life uh, five times that doctor first thought he would, doctor said he would die. Well, he didn't say that first, but later I heard that he thought my mom would die. Uh, with less than a year, but you know, she kept living and she lived five and a half years with that condition. But uh, I remember a supernatural peace came over my heart and my life that night. Nothing changed. We were still there in that room, but I walked out because of this connection with God and my focus on the things of God and promises of God. I didn't put my faith in that prayer or anything or in that man, but it's it was something in there that, that just helped me to get my peace and joy back. So these are sometimes very supernatural things. Of course, naturally also we can get peaceful, you know, if, Things are in order. I had a big issue with my wife, let's say, and you got it squared away. You talked it over. You reconciled. Oh, you feel peace and you feel joy. Or things are going well with your finances and you just got the promotion or you got an extra job or, you know, you got this thing paid off. Yeah, you feel peaceful. But then there is this, what I call supernatural peace and joy. And, and that's what um, God is speaking here in the book of Romans 15 and 13 and says, May God of all hope fill you with peace and joy that you would have uh, abundantly hope uh, in the Holy Ghost. So God would also provide that. I remember years ago, I was a very young Christian more than 30 years ago, I was praying in my prayer chamber. I was so worried again about something and fearful. And God did not answer my prayer necessarily, but he did fill me with hope and peace and joy. And that gave my focus back and inspiration to just keep going. And as my openness returned, um, you know, people, when they're worrying and fearful, they actually closed. They, they closed down. But now I was open and I began to see opportunities again. My life prospered there again. I was blossoming and fruitful and everything actually just kept going better and better. Now, my particular prayer and desire, what I had and what I worried about that at that time, never actually came to pass, but God filled me with peace and joy. Now, Paul is in prison and should have every reason to be panicking, is expressing his joy and how joyful he is about the progress of the gospel and the well-being of Philippians church. And then he encourages these church people also. Now, back then, life was hard compared to what we have today. Besides that, the early church was often persecuted, killings and tortures and all kinds of things happened. So, but he, Paul says, rejoice. You know, we have the ability to do that. I don't speak against the therapies and things like that. And sometimes we do need professional help. Yes, I do believe that. But in the days of Paul, you couldn't go to a therapist. You couldn't schedule a counseling, you know, session or, or, or psychologist or, you know, uh, any kind of 
things like that were not there at the time in that form anyway. But um, he says, rejoice in the Lord. And there is real joy and peace that can come from the Lord. But you got to connect. And sometimes, you know, when our head is full of worries and fears, it's difficult to just create the connection with God. Now, when you stick um, uh, a socket into the wall socket, this um, electricity plug, to charge your phone battery, immediately as the connection happens, there starts to be the uh, transference of power energy into your phone. And that's the same way with God. As the connection happens, and I understand sometimes we don't feel the connection. And again, I don't say that when you don't feel connection with heaven, when you pray, God's not listening. It's just a lot of different things going on in our mind and things like that. But, you know, but we do need the sense of the presence of God. And Bible actually encourages us to seek His presence, not just shoot my prayer up towards heaven. God, here's the list, what you got to do in these next days. I have those things to take care of. And, you know, you get to work. And I got things to do and places to go. But prayer is seeking His presence. It's also with people, right? With your family member. You don't want to just have a casual talk and, huh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, you want, you want, you want heart to heart conversation where you feel you connect. And when you connect, something is transferred. Something flows from one to another. From God, all life, the life source, all life flows into us. Joy flows into us. Peace. So in the times of trouble, when you can connect with God and keep the connection, Jesus did it. That's why he was peaceful. And then you can stay in peace and actually have joy in very difficult circumstances. People may say you're crazy, but you keep the connection with God. That's what Paul did. Paul had that. Paul kept it. And Jesus said also that I give you my peace. Now the same peace he had when he was in that storm or before crucifixion and uh, dealing with all dealings with all, I mean, dealing with all these uh, persecuted, persecutors, scribes, all these attackers, all the pressures, everything he did, he did have. I mean, he he's never lost his peace. And he said, I'm going to give my peace to you. But you got to connect to get that peace. It's not like a one-time connection. You got to stay connected. Practice the presence of God every day. Don't let your relationship lower down, the level to go down. It's not like you pushed yourself up and then you kind of uh, let your battery run dead. You've got to keep this up to the highest level all the time, as much as you can. And then in John 16, 24, he says, pray that you may have joy and your joy may be, you know, abundant. So again, Jesus speaks of peace and joy. In Galatians 5.22, peace and joy are brought out as, as the gift, uh, as the fruits of the Spirit. Now, fruits are not uh, like talents or gifts. They're not freely given. I mean, they need to be grown. The seeds need to grow up and bring forth fruit. And you start, you know, experiencing expanding and extending your peace and joy to others. So those are the fruits, which means those are my responsibilities to keep, to guard, to grow, to increase, to keep it alive. So in 
life wherever you look, uh, you see that God is obsessed with order. God is a God of order. And everything in universe is in, you know, very keen order. Everything is perfect. You move something, you change something just slightly, and you got a huge problem. You cannot do that. Everything is in order. That's why everything works so well. Now, all movement towards order creates pleasure. The more in order are things with your health, the more you enjoy your life. More order in your family life, the more you enjoy your relationships. More order in your finances and the more enjoyable is your fiscal life, financial life. Order produces peace and joy. And that order in the Bible also is described or used the word righteousness. If and when my relationship is right with God and Jesus is my Lord. And let's say as a Christian, I sin, but I have repented and rejected that sin. Ask Jesus to cleanse me with his blood. And this order is reestablished. As a consequence, I walk in peace and I walk in joy. And that peace and joy give, gives my body special breathing, special rest, and uh, platform to grow and expand. So I need that. I need that. And I need things to be in order. So I need to fight for it that I don't allow the thoughts of worry, fear, uh, depression, and, uh, you know, rejection and low self-esteem and the list goes on. I don't allow these to come into my mind. And if they do, I, I put them back beyond that uh, limit. Like it's, a, it's like a puppy that you take and you only want the puppy. Uh, to stay in the kitchen area, at, le at least first, when, you know, he pees and does things everywhere. And you say, no, you don't. And you pick it up and put it back in the <laughs> kitchen limits. And soon enough, the dog will learn that. Hey, I got to stay in this area. My dog did. I remember I did that with my dog. So later, it was hard to get him to come to, uh, or her to come to, to other areas of the house. So you got to do that with your thoughts. You're going to watch what you think. And as you see, going towards something, it's not, you know, peaceful, joyful, and starts to instill worry and fears. You got to say, hey, that thought is not uh, allowed in my territory. It's a illegal without a visa entry. <laughs> I got to, I got to, I got to throw it out from these borders and keep my mind and keep my heart in perfect peace and joy because in that platform my life flourishes i hear the lord i can walk with him freely i have right perspective right mind you need peace and joy so i want to encourage you i want to challenge you to check if you have kept your peace and kept this joy God gave you. And these uh, seeds or fruits of the Spirit need to continue to grow according to what you do and how you let them prosper and become more fruitful.